Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to discuss on modulation. Our topic for today's discussion is to understand what is modulation. We are also going to discuss why we need modulation and also the different types of modulation. In short, there are two types of modulation, analog modulation or digital modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on the notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Thank you so much. Firstly, let's define what is modulation. Modulation is the process of using the information signal or data to modify one of the characteristics of a higher frequency signal before transmission. In short, modulation is the process of modifying the higher frequency signal according to the information signal. Okay, so later on, I'm going to illustrate a little bit more on this concept. The information signal, okay, there are actually three names. They all refer back to the same thing, which is the information signal or data. Okay, they either call baseband, intelligent, or modulating signal. And it's normally denoted by EMT. Okay, so this is the theta, the name of the theta. Next, the higher frequency signal helps to carry the information signal and hence is known as the carrier signal, okay, which is denoted as ECT. Okay, so this signal typically have a higher frequency. Okay, carrier is actually tasked to help to carry the information from one point to another point. And typically, carrier signal has a higher frequency as compared to the modulating signal. The modified carrier, which is also known as modulated signal, it is actually after the process of modulation. Okay, so this is what it means here. Okay, next, I'm going to discuss the relationship between the three signals. Number one, modulating. Number two, carrier. Number three, modulated signal. Okay, so I'm going to discuss how these three signals are all related. Right in the middle is a process of modulation. The signal or the data, which is known as modulated signal, is actually fit to the process of modulation. The carrier is also fixed into the modulation. The process of modulation, as I explained earlier on, is to modify the higher frequency according to the modulating signal, which means that we are going to change the carrier signal with some characteristics of the modulating signal in order to form the modulated signal. Okay, so this modulated signal is the signal that we're going to send over the air, for example. Okay, let's quickly understand why we need to do this also. Okay, so why we need to do modulation? Okay, direct transmission of baseband signal like our voice, TV signal, etc. Okay, without using modulation, they are actually undesired. Okay, because of two factor. Number one, okay, without modulation, okay, the antenna will be very huge. A huge antenna is normally required for a very low frequency baseband signal. Okay, so let me explain why. Okay, the physical dimension of the antenna is direct proportional to the wavelength. Okay, which means that the size of an antenna is actually related to the wavelength. And if you take a look on this equation, the higher the frequency, the smaller the wavelength, and hence we can have a small and portable antenna. If we're going to have a very low frequency and the wavelength become a big number, hence you can imagine that your antenna size is very large. And hence, large antenna is not practical okay, because firstly of high cost, Okay, and also the difficulty of installing and also maintain it. Okay, imagine your mobile phone with low frequency, okay, the size of the antenna actually increased. And what happened here is 
can you imagine how big will be your mobile phone antenna? So therefore with this, actually it's quite desired that we want to increase the frequency as much as possible in order to have a reduced size of antenna design. So this is the first reason. Second reason, simultaneous transmission of baseband signal, they typically cause interference. If there are more than one baseband transmission through the transmission medium at any one time, then all information will interfere with each other. So this is one of the examples. Imagine if all the radio station were to simultaneously transmit their DJ voice without going through any sort of modulation process. Okay, this voice being a most of the same frequency would then interfere with each other and make listening impossible. Okay, which means that we don't do any modulation. We just transmit the direct voice over to you to listen for the music. Because our voice typically have almost the same frequency. Hence, they would create a huge interference. And at the end, okay, we probably can't listen because there will be all interfere signal. Next, let's come to understand the different types of modulation. Okay. The characteristics of the carrier signal can be modified by the modulating signal. Okay. You either modify the amplitude of the carrier signal according to the modulating signal. Okay. Or you can change the frequency of the carrier signal with according to the modulating signal. Or last but not least, you change the phase of the carrier signal according to the modulating signal. The reverse process of recovering the original information signal from the modulated carrier at the receiver end is called demodulation. This is a quick diagram to let you understand the different type of modulation. There are in fact two types. One is analog, another one is the digital. On the left is actually the analog modulation. You can see from here the baseband signal, okay, they are actually analog signal. Okay, and then they fit into the analog modulation. At the outcome, which is the modulated signal, we either call it amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, or phase modulation. Okay, so this is the definition of analog modulation. The carrier signal, amplitude, frequency, or phase is modified by the baseband analog signal. Okay, the baseband signal is analog okay, in nature. Okay, let's take a quick look on digital modulation. So the input of the digital modulation is a digital baseband signal. At the outcome of the modulated signal is either we call amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and also phase shift keying. In digital modulation, the carrier signal, amplitude, frequency, or phase is also modified by the baseband signal. Okay, the baseband signal is digital, okay, which is discrete, either one or zero in nature. So you can see that the big difference is actually the analog. The input is a analog characteristic. As for the digital modulation, the input to the digital modulation is actually a digital baseband signal, either one or zero. With this, i like to stop my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.